The spur gears shown have a module of 12 millimeters and a pressure angle of 20 degrees. If the pinion, gear 2, rotates at 1800 revolutions per minute clockwise and transmits 150 kilowatts through the idler pair, which are gears 3 and 4 on shaft B, to gear 5 on shaft C, what forces are gears 3 and 4 transmitting to the idler shaft B? This is the first example for the spur gear force components main video. The link to the main video is in the video description. From previous examples in that main video, we know we can find the torque of a gear if we know the power it's transmitting and the speed at which it is rotating. If gear 2 is rotating clockwise, it means that gear 3 is rotating counterclockwise because of the interaction force between gears 2 and 3. We know, however, that this force is angled at a value determined by the pressure angle. So the force that makes gear 3 rotate is the tangential component. The radial component would therefore be the perpendicular component of this force. From action-reaction, we'd see the components of W3-2, the force from gear 3 to gear 2, in the opposite direction. From the power equation, we see that if we have the revolutions per minute of gear 2, and the tangential component and the radius of gear 2, which are the two variables that we need to calculate the torque, we can solve for that tangential component. Realizing that we're gonna need the radii of the gears, we use the number of teeth of each gear and their module to find the diameter of each gear. The tangential component of the interaction force between gears 2 and 3 is therefore 7.4 kN. With a pressure angle of 20 degrees, the radial component would be the tangential component times tangent of 20. If gear 4 is rotating in the same direction with gear 3, since they're on the same shaft B, gear 5 is rotating clockwise because of the interaction force between gears 4 and 5. From action-reaction and the pressure angle, we can locate the other force vectors. Since gear 4 is actually on the same shaft as gear 3, and since shaft B is not angularly accelerating, meaning that its angular acceleration is zero and therefore the sum of torques is zero, we see that W23T times the radius of gear 3, which is a positive torque, minus W54T times the radius of gear 4, negative since it's a clockwise torque, is equal to zero. With the radii of the gears and the tangential component of the interaction force between gears 2 and 3, we find the tangential component of the interaction force between gears 5 and 4. Just like we did for W32, the radial component would be this value times tangent of 20. These are the four forces from gears 3 and 4 that affect shaft B. You'll notice that a sum of forces in the x direction or the y direction don't add up to zero. For a full force body diagram of gears 3 and 4, we would see the reaction forces that the shaft generates on the gears. Looking at a free body diagram of the shaft, we'd see that these reaction forces actually come from the bearings, but we'll study those later. For another example on spur gear force components, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.